Welcome to Wrestle Capsule. I'm your host, B. Let's talk about Monday Night Raw. So Raw started off with none other than the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, reminding us of what happened post WrestleMania, the catastrophe that was Raw, and how Brock Lesnar effed up Cody Rhodes. And then Finn Balor comes out to interrupt. Finn never fails to amaze me. He is still trying to recruit people for Judgment Day. You know darn well Cody Rhodes was not going to agree to become a part of your group. Like, let's just give it up. Finn didn't take lightly to that. Either you with us, you against us. So that was just foreshadowing that, of course, Cody Rhodes and Finn Balor were going to have a match on Raw. I mean, it was an okay segment. I mean, it wasn't anything special about it. I was engaged because these two are great talkers. Finn Balor and Cody Rhodes know how to move a crowd. But other than that, I mean, it, it was just a regular Monday Night Raw segment. The first match of the night was the match between the Bloodline versus Legado del Fantasma, or should I call them just LWO now? Because, I mean, they repping LWO, they got a freaking new entrance music, that sh that's a straight up bop. Of course it is a nice touch when you put Eddie Guerrero's voice on the LWO entrance music, like you can't, can't deny it, okay? But anyway, overall, I enjoyed this match. I thought it was so dope, I already knew the Bloodline was going to win. Jimmy, Jay, and Sola, I knew they were gonna pick up the W. You have the Usos going into a championship match, a rematch on SmackDown, this SmackDown for the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship. And then at Backlash, you have the Bloodline versus Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Matt Riddle. So of course they were gonna win, but the match itself was so entertaining. And once again, I'm seeing WWE is allowing Legato Del Fantasma to shine. Escobar, Wild, and Del Toro were doing the dang thing. I was so happy that they were able to show off their skills. It was a lot of energy in this match. And it was definitely some great spots, some great high flying spots. I wanna see more from LWO. I feel like this transition from Legato Del Fantasma to LWO is going to be really good for this group and I hope that they get more opportunities a really good stable that we can get behind so I mean I was happy about that is it just me or were you surprised to see Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin be on TV I feel like it's been a while and I mean I was actually it was I was pleasantly surprised and then they have their match against the Street Profits. The match seemed short, and for such talented wrestlers like the Street Profits and Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander, I felt like that was too short. To do that to them, I felt like it was one of those things that always bug me about Monday Night Raw. With it being a three hour show, you throw in these random matches and they could be great, but you cut them so short in interest of time. But it's Fans can't get behind it. You do not do that to them. I felt like that was whack. If it wasn't short and it was longer, I would have enjoyed it. I was hoping that they would bring back the Hurt Business, but MVP is solely focused on Omas, and you have Bobby Lashley who is continuing to pursue the United States Championship, and then you have Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. They're in a tag team, and it's like, where are they just there to make their opponents look good? Is this gonna be a whole other Alpha Academy thing or what? Y'all, Triple H's announcement of having a World Heavyweight Championship. Guys, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this announcement. And let me know what you think about the belt too. I was floored when he made the announcement and he had the belt right next to him. I like that belt. <laughs> better than the regular WWE Championship in the Universal. Like, hands down, I like it. I've always hated that big old stupid W in the middle, so to have, even though the big stupid W is not as big, you have all this gold, you have like the world behind it. Like, I, I love it. And it reminds me of the old Heavyweight Championship. This is a long time overdue. You have the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns, he still has both belts and he's going between both shows. But now with Triple H's announcement talking about how wherever Roman Reigns is drafted to, that's the show he's gonna be at. And then what about the other show? Now they're gonna have a 
a belt for that show. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy about it. What I didn't like is that we are going to find out who is going to be crowned the new world heavyweight champion on May 27th, Night of Champions. And where is Night of Champions gonna be at? Saudi Arabia. But besides that, I'm looking forward to seeing who is going to get that belt. I'd love for Seth, Seth Rollins to get it. But I don't know if that's gonna actually happen. This six woman tag team match, you know you got our current women tag team champions, Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan with our Raw Women's Champion, Bianca Belair versus Damage Control. The match itself, I feel like we've seen this before. I feel like this is a rinse and repeat just in a different, just a different combination. Like I, I, I'm getting, this is getting old. This whole thing with Bianca Belair and Damage Control for me, for me, it's getting old. And even though I absolutely love EO Sky and EO Sky is gonna be going up against Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's Championship at Backlash. I know that Bianca Belair is going to retain. What sucks about this whole thing is the fact that I cannot see other than Asuka and we're not gonna get into that. I can't think of any other woman who is ready and who looks like a viable competitor to go up against Bianca Belair and for me to actually believe that they could win against her. But to go back to the six woman tag team match, I mean, it was decent, it was okay. I mean, it was nothing special. I'm just gonna say this. The Mustafa Ali versus Chad Gable match. I had almost forgot. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, let's not lie. Let's not lie on your show, okay? I forgot, let me just be honest. I forgot that Mustafa Ali was from Chicago. And the moment that they said that, I was like, oh, we're having Raw in Chicago. Mustafa Ali is having a match on Raw in Chicago. This man's gonna win this match. It wasn't a surprise to me. It was very short, another one of those short A matches on Monday Night Raw that was just, it, it just made the crowd get excited because they have their own homegrown win a match, but the match was so freaking short. I hate this new gimmick thing that Mustafa Ali is doing, the positively thing. I'm not here for I don't want it, I don't like it. They need to do something else with him. He's better than that. But I am liking, and I can't believe I'm saying this, I'm finally slowly getting on the wagon. They've been doing it long enough that I've kinda been getting into it. This whole fight for Otis's love and friendship. You got one side, you got Maxine Dupree trying to bring Otis out but then you got Chad Gable who's like yo Otis you you're my number one protege like we still gotta keep Alpha Academy going like what are you doing so I'm interested to see where that is gonna go and who Otis gosh they got me calling this man Otis Otis is going to do who he's going to pick because in this WWE draft is Chad and Otis going to separate the stay together on the same brand like we don't know where is Maxime Dupree going to go Finn Balor versus Cody Rhodes overall it was definitely a solid match the, it, with a clean finish Cody Rhodes took up the W I felt like these two could have went harder I wouldn't mind having Cody Rhodes have another run in with Judgment Day like Finn Balor said in the beginning of Raw like you're either going to be with them in the group or you're going to be against them. There's no there's no gray. Maybe they don't want to take too much away from what's going to be happening on Backlash with Brock Lesnar and Cody Rhodes going at it. Disclaimer, I'm about to ruffle some feathers. Who in the friggery frick wanted a premium live event match with Seth freaking Rollins versus Omos? Who wanted that? Who in the WWE Universe wanted these two to have a match at Backlash. I'll wait. Not I, Sam. I wasn't, I didn't want that. With Seth freaking Rollins coming out, standing in front of Omos, how Seth freaking Rollins was talking, the aggression behind it, the crowd loves it, they eat out of the palm of this man's hands, they sing his entrance music. Seth Rollins, I hate using the word over, but he is. Even with that dope promo that he spit, not being afraid of Omos and ready for this match 
at Backlash, I'm still not looking forward to it. This is going to be Omos's night where he's going to win and Seth is going to be used to put him over. I don't want to see that. I know they're trying to build Omos. I know Omos is getting better. Yada yada yada. I've said this, but I don't want to I don't want to see these two go at it. Like you there's nothing there's nothing leading up to this. There has no there hasn't been any work put into this. This is so freaking random. So the main event of Monday Night Raw was a match between Rey Mysterio versus Damian Priest. Rey Mysterio won by disqualification because Damian Priest couldn't help himself. <laughs> but but what was interesting to me was Bad Bunny came out. His music hit the dude came out. He is over Damian Priest and Damian Priest is over Bad Bunny. For Bad Bunny to make the announcement that he's no longer going to be hosting Backlash and instead he's going to have a freaking street fight with Damian Priest, bruh, bruh. That's a whole treat. They're, Puerto Rico's getting a whole treat. Ugh, I, it's crazy. These two, Damian Priest and Bad Bunny, were side by side on a tag team. And now they're against each other. This is full circle on a whole different level. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Bad Bunny in the ring again. Cause the last time this man wrestled, I was surprised. I feel like a lot of people were surprised at how good this man was. So man, I, I'm, I'm freaking here for it. We're gonna see. So guys, let me know what you thought about Monday Night Raw. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more episodes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Signing off. Bye.